This video is sponsored by The Home Depot. This is our guest half bathroom, and as you can see, it's entirely too dark and outdated. So let's brighten things up. Up first, I need to demo the bathroom. I'm gonna take the toilet out of here, get rid of that, probably donate it. I would like to keep the vanity, however. This vanity is original to this house. If I can get it out in one piece, I can reskin it with an oak veneer and make it look really nice, but I'm not quite sure I can do that, so wish me luck. The first order of business is to get this black toilet out of the bathroom, which I did after shutting off the water and disconnecting the supply line. Once the mirror was out, I can focus on getting the counter off of the vanity, which requires me to first remove the backsplash and that side splash, which I was able to pry off the wall after cutting through the caulking with a razor. This vanity was built in place into that wall and there was essentially just a bunch of brad nails holding it all together. Now, my goal was to keep it intact and reskin it with an oak veneer, but I realized very quickly that wasn't gonna be possible. Moving on to demoing the rest of the bathroom, I pulled off the base trim and removed the light fixture and electrical socket wall plates. All right, up next, I'm going to get rid of this heavy texture on the walls here in the bathroom. And to do that, I'm gonna use joint compound to add several layers and cover this up, smooth it out. But before I do that, I'm gonna to wanna to sand these painted walls. I'm not trying to take this all off. I'm just trying to rough up the surface so again, we get good adhesion. Next up, I taped off the remaining trim and put down some paper that would protect the flooring. I'm using this box of premixed joint compound that I got from Home Depot, and then I'm thinning it down to a pancake batter-like consistency by adding in some water. Using a half inch nap roller, I rolled on a thick layer of joint compound and went over those roller lines with this drywall squeegee. And I'll make sure to leave links to all these tools and equipment that I used down in the description below. That first coat went on really well, but as heavy as this texture is, I can already tell, I'm probably gonna need more than two or three coats. I'm thinking at least four. On subsequent coats, you're gonna to wanna to alternate the direction that you squeegee the joint compound to make sure you get even coating down into all those voids. After three coats of joint compound, there's still a lot of that texture left. So I'm gonna switch gears here. I'm gonna use a hawk and a drywall trowel. I'm gonna trowel on a thicker coat of that joint compound, hopefully get a lot of coverage in those problem areas, and then it'll be ready to move on to the next step, which is putting on the trim. Now for the vanity, I wanna make a faux Carrera marble top using epoxy over this Baltic birch plywood. I laid down some of these Rockler silicone mats for the glue up of those two layers of plywood that I'm gonna to use to create the countertop. I also recently picked up this Rockler clamp storage rack and it allows me just to roll all of my clamps through the workbench and really helps keep me organized. Speaking of organization, this is a great time to point out how I've been able to build out my Husky Dream Shop with this Husky workbench, this tool cabinet, and those storage cabinets that you see behind me in this new shop, which is the home for the new business that I started that's called The Slavatory. I've teamed up with the Home Depot and Husky Tools to showcase all of their workshop storage solutions and all the clever Husky tools that you've seen me using in all of my projects lately. Make sure you check out all the links for these products down below, and thanks to the Home Depot for supporting what I do. This countertop is two layers of plywood with a quarter inch strip of plywood on the outside leading edge that gives you an overhang when it's sitting on the vanity. I want to hide that plywood edge grain, so I sanded it smooth and then applied some of this plastic wood filler to cover up the edge and smooth everything out. 
Next up, I can sand everything and add a slight chamfer to those leading edges of the countertop. Here I'm painting the countertop white. If you wanted to, you could totally stop here provided that you used a durable enough paint and maybe gave it a clear coat. But my plan is to create a fake marble countertop using an epoxy technique and this Total Boat 2 to 1 high performance epoxy. I'm actually gonna do a full video on this process, so make sure you get subscribed to the channel, and that video will be coming out pretty soon after this one. Once that video is live, I'll have a link for it down below, as well as links for all the other Dreamhouse Renovation Series videos. All right, we're ready for round two of the pour, and look who decided to join me. It's Mike from Modern Builds. It was my mom's birthday, so I came into town, and it just also happens to be the fact that uh, Johnny is starting an incredibly huge business. So I just got done checking it out. It's insane, it's literally right through the window there. <laughs> There's uh, slabs on slabs on slabs on slabs. You're gonna hear more about it probably. I also designed and built my own bathroom vanity to replace the old one. Now, initially I wanted to skin the existing vanity in some white oak pressure sensitive veneer that I got from Rockler, but I ended up deciding to build a vanity out of Baltic birch plywood and then skin all the show faces on that and the door panels out of that oak veneer. Now that was a pretty involved build and it really needs its own video as well to break down all the steps and provide those build plans. So just like with the countertop, I'll be releasing a standalone video walking you through all the steps so you can build your own bathroom vanity. And there was a whole bunch of firsts on that build, including using those PSA veneers, making doors with rails and styles, and building a face frame cabinet. So make sure you check out that video when it drops in the next few weeks. Okay, getting back to the house and those bathroom walls, that joint compound had fully dried. I expected needing to roll on another coat or two of joint compound, but the walls turned out really smooth and they were ready to paint at this point. In preparation for the painting, I removed that light fixture from the ceiling, which I'll replace later on. I also removed the bathroom vent, but decided this was in good enough shape to keep for now. Now I can roll on two coats of a satin white paint, and once those were dry, I came back and installed the new light fixture so I could stop using my video lights while I was working in the bathroom. It was so cramped in there that it was really hard to work with my lights and my camera in such a small space. Also, I love this modern, elegant light fixture, which I found for a really good price on Amazon, and I've got that link down below. The previous lights were all super soft and yellow, but I prefer a bright daylight white in the 5000 Kelvin temperature range. And that color temperature does so much to transform such a small dim space. I prepped the bathroom for the vanity install and I had to build a small platform out of two by fours and plywood because there's this two inch recess where that stone floor stopped where that original vanity was built in place. Once I had that platform down, I could bring in the new vanity and place it up against the wall. The countertop was made to be oversized so I could cut it to fit to its exact sizing during the install. Now, I use my track saw to do this, but a straight edge and a circular saw works just as well here. All right, the bathroom renovation is going fantastic. I've taken this bathroom from dark and drab to bright and beautiful. I just installed the oak vanity with that epoxy marble countertop. And to add a little bit of sophistication and detail and texture, I'm gonna do what's called a chair rail. It's a trim detail, it's only for show, but it's really gonna level up this bathroom, add a bit of sophistication and class. It's super easy, let's get to it. For the chair rail, I'm using half inch MDF, which I first sealed with some Total Boat Halcyon varnish and then painted the same satin white that's on the walls. I started with the top rail piece, which I had to actually trim to fit around the end of the countertop by cutting a notch with my jigsaw. That top rail is gonna sit even with the bathroom counter. If you don't have a laser level, I highly recommend you pick one up if you're gonna be doing any type of install project like this. It makes getting everything level and square absolutely foolproof, and it's really great for all kinds of projects around the house, like hanging shelves or picture frames. I cut in these 45 degree miters where the trim meets at the corners, and then I attach everything to the wall with two inch brad nails. Thank you. 
That top rail is three inches wide, but that bottom rail is three and a quarter inches wide to match the height of that old trim. And I initially cut these too narrow, which is why you see the pieces I'm installing are not painted yet. Moving on to that architectural detail of the chair rail, I'm gonna use one inch wide strips of that half inch MDF, and I'm creating a pattern of interconnecting rectangles. Now these are just spaced three inches apart and then three inches from the upper rail and three inches from the lower rail. I again cut all those pieces to ensure they're the same size and then I use the laser level to keep everything lined up and I worked my way around the room attaching the pieces with brad nails. And I'm not so worried about all the seams as I'll come back later on and fill those all with wood putty before painting. Given this is such a small space, this small detail goes a long way towards making the space interesting and adding that classy, elegant touch. And like I said, I went back and filled all those nail holes and the seams before painting. So I wasn't able to reclaim the original vanity, but I figured I could at least reclaim the old mirror by removing it from this cheap plastic frame and building a new frame out of some more of that white oak that's gonna match the vanity. Here I'm cutting up these five quarter white oak boards into three inch wide strips and then using my Rockler crosscut sled to cut in those 45 degree miters. I made a rabbit for the mirror to sit down into by cutting a quarter inch deep notch into the backs of each piece before the glue up. I glued up the frame and then shot in some staples at the miters for some added strength and stability. Back inside the bathroom, I'm gonna install a vessel sink that sits up on top of the countertop. Here you see me laying out the positioning of that vessel sink and making sure the plumbing will go right down the center of the vanity. And what you don't see is me measuring this like 15 times off camera to make sure I got this right, considering how stressful it is to drill through something that I spent so much time making. One wrong move and it's back to square one. Luckily, this went really well. I placed the sink in place and used the sink drain to mark the location of that second hole that I need to drill into the cabinet to connect the plumbing to the lower section of the cabinet. I also picked up this Delta faucet that's made for vessel sinks and it's in this champagne bronze color which just adds to that bright classy theme of this bathroom. It's not sponsored but I'll make sure I link all the bathroom components that I use down below. With the holes for the faucet drilled, I can sand the countertop one more time and apply a coat of Odie's oil for finish. And then I did the same thing for the pieces that I'm using for the backsplash and the side splash. Now I can finish building the mirror by sanding the frame and applying some more of that Odie's oil for a finish. I laid the mirror in place and then used the old hardware to secure it to the frame and mount the hanger wire. It's time to go ahead and install that new sink and plumb everything in. But one of the problems I'm gonna run into is this new vanity that I built is a little bit bigger than the old vanity so that old P-trap doesn't quite line up. Thankfully, they make these. This is an adjustable form to fit P-trap and it's gonna make this process super simple. As with any plumbing or electrical, make sure you consult a professional and ensure what you're doing is up to code in your area. Now I can fit in those back and side splashes and I'm just using a little bit of silicone caulk to attach them to the walls. And here I wanna reiterate that I'm not a professional. I'm just learning as I go and taking you all along for the journey. Never is that more apparent as I try to install my first toilet right here. We'll just call this a rodeo style install. Yeehaw! 
I wanted some thick oak shelves to go above the toilet, so I decided to build some fake ones using more Baltic birch and that oak veneer which I had left over. And these are easy to build and way more cost effective than going out and buying eight quarter white oak boards. Again, I'm using the rest of that PSA veneer that I got from Rockler, and these just go on super easy using this pressure roller. On the leading edge, I added some edge banding and decided to paint the ends a gold to match the rest of the bathroom accents. Now I can mount those shelf brackets through the wall, again using a laser level and some drywall anchors. I picked up these brackets on Amazon for fairly cheap and painted them to match with the same gold paint that I painted the end of the shelves with. Once that mirror was hung, I can stage the bathroom and this remodel project is done. I'm just blown away with the transformation from that dark and drab 1980s style bathroom with that black countertop and the toilet to this bright, white, modern, elegant bathroom that was fairly easy to do. I just love how something so simple like the MDF chair rail trim adds so much texture and sophistication to the space. That oak vanity and epoxy marble countertop came out way better than I imagined. Again, both elements of that build require their own video to break down all the steps. So make sure you get subscribed and ring the notification bell so you get notified when those videos drop in the next couple weeks. Also check out the Dream House Renovation Tour video to see the whole house and all the rooms and projects that I have planned. I wanna give a special thanks to the Home Depot for sponsoring this build, and make sure you check out all the Husky tools and shop organization solutions that I've got linked below so you can build out your own Husky dream shop. Thanks to Rockler for supporting my channel, and I've got all those Rockler products I use linked down below. If you're interested in using Total Boat Epoxy and finishes, make sure to use my discount, JBuilds, for 15% off. Thanks for checking this one out, and I'll see you back here next time on Johnny Builds.